So there's this idea of first, second, and third read. So first read would be, you know, the first shape, right? First big shape. If you look at it, it's like this first big shape, you see. And usually we, our brains perceive this big shape, big silhouette first. It's not even conscious, right? We do it unconsciously. Even traditionally, even drawing in the traditional method, when you are drawing something like this it's like you know we first think about the nose uh you know you draw lightly something like this and you know you add the details all that stuff but the, initially we think about it as this first straight line right and now maybe Look at the eye sockets. Right, this could be some method. Or animators uh, use curves, right, using simple forms. Maybe a sphere for the nose and eye sockets. So, yeah, again, there's no right or wrong method, but the idea is we simplify it, right? That's how our brains work. It's like we look at the world. We don't you we don't see the world as it is. We kind of make a low resolution model of the world in our minds, right? So if you ask anyone, draw a tree, or if you ask a child, draw a tree. They do something like this, right? Or they do something like this. Or if you ask them to draw a house, they do this. And if you show this to anyone in the world, they can tell this is a house, right? So basic shapes, right? Also, again, if you tell a child to draw a face, they draw a sphere, eyes, mouth, right? So yeah, we don't actually, you know, capture the world like a photograph, a photo, a photo camera. Yeah, we make a low resolution model, right? So the idea is we have the first, second, third read, but we simplify this, right? We have this big silhouette, but you can think about it like this box and then this triangular shape, right? This could be the first read. And then second read would be something like, uh, not the small details, but you know, this one, this shape here, nose, this area, cheekbones, this area could be this box, the top of the head could be this box again, ear could be this box, right? This is the second read. And the third read is all the small details, right? Uh, right up to the skin details, all that stuff, maybe these edges of the mouth, these small shapes, the details of the nose, these small parts, or these parts, these parts, the details of the eye, all that, right? So that's the third read. Uh, what I mean by visual alchemy is we take these shapes and then play with these shapes on the go, or you can do slow studies as well. But yeah, we play with these shapes. So if you take this guy, so you can go like this, right? Uh, top of the head. 
And when I look look at it, the most distinct feature is these cheekbones, right? So you can exaggerate them. So what we can do is make the top of the head larger like this, wider, and lower parts narrower, right? And then you draw normally as you draw, right? And just fit uh, these, uh, you know, second reads, third read shapes appropriately, right? Maybe you can keep the eyes same, right? That would be funny. Like <laughs> maybe you keep the nose the same. Eyes the same. Something like this. But the head is huge, right? And then maybe make the ears huge. And I mean, top of the head. So this is some over exaggeration, but you know, it's to. <laughs> uh, uh, make the point. Right, and then we have uh, shapes, with the mouth. But the idea is this, right? And this is not only for exaggeration. Uh, even if you don't exaggerate, you can just you know, play with the shapes or uh, express them in different ways, right? We can make the shapes with lines like these, like not curves, but you know, curved straights, let's say. That could be the line language right all through the drawing maybe you use these kind of lines or it, uh, it could be straight right you are just using straights or it could be the rhythm right how these lines uh, or what kind of relationship are there between the lines right are they always do this, right? Or are are they always perpendicular to each other? Something like that. It could be. It could be anything, right? Think about if you think about music. Uh, there are some rules in music theory, but the idea is the same, right? It could be, you know. So how how are the angles? You can think about uh, that, right? So how are these angles? Are they like doing this all the time? Or are, do they have more distinct angles? Or are they like, like this? So there are virtually infinite uh, possibilities, right? Usually what I tend to do is, if I'm going to draw a face, I just look at it and just exagger exaggerate a feature, right? If the cheekbones first catch my eye, okay, let, let's make this dude with huge cheekbones, something like that. Or if it's the expression, you can exaggerate the expression, right? If, if uh, let's say this is like, uh, he's making some expression like this, right? Sad expression. You can exaggerate that uh, as well, right? If the eyebrows are like this in the reference, you can exaggerate them, right? You can do something like this, right? It's like very, very sad. Or if it's angry, if it's looking like this, you can make it more angry, right? 
also this depends on you know the realism stylization uh, spectrum but even when it comes to realism you can you know subtly play with these and you know express and you know juice up the drawing or painting so much so yeah this is what i uh, mean by visual alchemy and basically this is all there is to it when it comes to stylization it's like you know uh obviously it comes with you know knowing what the face uh is made made up of right the basic anatomy basic shapes but at the end of the day you can look at it virtually infinite uh different ways let's say you want to make this guy or you want to uh what is it express a more thin uh face right you can just uh if this is the face you can just squash squash it and you can do something like this so the good uh, the good thing about thinking about it as simple forms is it's much easier to you know making a what is it square like this than to you know than to think about all these details right so this is something we do in the first read or first or second or whatever so yeah you can just you know scratch it or maybe also scratch it uh vertically right also drawing small really helps so you don't get caught up in the details so you can basically play with it depends on your purpose right usually what i tend to think is you know <laughs> people who use a specific part of their body that's you can think about it uh, the more you use something the more energy you put into that part so that part would be bigger right at least you know it's like manifesting bigger in your drawing so if this person would be someone who uses his eyes more it could be like you know maybe big eyes right or if he has some superpower that he can smell very good it could be a big nose right you can think about it like that but yeah there are lots of virtually infinite possibilities you can uh, come with but you can just go with the basic idea i just talked about you know yeah this is basically what i use when i'm drawing basically anything right uh, i'm just thinking about the shapes even if i'm not exaggerating just thinking about the shapes so thinking about this line how this line would line up with this one or the line of the cheek kind of makes a rhythm with this part right so all these together all these rhythm lines the relationship between lines the relationship between the shapes uh they all add up uh to you know appeal so yeah also you know i'm talking about the lines right also when it comes to shapes the relationship between the shapes is also you know that's something as well that's a huge topic by itself so if you think about the shapes the big or let's say big medium small right but this is like you know this one is like like this like one fourth and this one is like one fourth of this but 
you know, I mean, it's subjective, but this is not always too exciting, right? But if you do something like this, big, uh, medium, and small, right? I mean, you can do something like this, or big, medium, small, right? Or, I don't know, you can use golden ratio, it's like something like this. So if big is this one, small one would be something like this, right? It's not half, but like golden ratio, you can go with that, or you can go with Fibonacci sequence, whatever it is, but uh, usually this is boring, right? Unless you are using repetition intentionally, this is not too much, too, this is not too exciting, but you know, or if you think about the rhythm or, you know, think about music, just the same tone with the same, uh, what is it called? Same space between them. It's not really exciting, right? But if there's some variation, like, and if you repeat this, maybe, maybe that's something, right? So yeah, thinking about uh, those stuff as well. So if you think about the big part of the head here, uh, the lower part is not exactly the half. It's like, you know, you can say it's golden ratio, right? Or something like that. But if you just, you know, do it the same, uh, I mean, Again, it's subjective, but you know, most of the artists uh, gave me that advice, like, never do this, right? Never divide something into two equal parts, unless, you know, you are going for symmetrical, that grounded, uh, strong feeling, unless that's the intention, uh, you know, a symmetrical balance is, you know, pretty much always looks much better. Yeah, so th this concept is basically what I use. And in time, you play with shapes, you play with different shapes, you know, study different uh, relationships between them. And in time, it's like automatic, right? It, in time, it becomes better and better. It's more like, you know, like Bruce Lee said, it's like a crystallization. Uh, your personal taste, uh, like, you know, everybody has a different taste. If you ask 10 people, like draw uh, three squares, they will all draw different things, right? It's like, you know, I don't know. If they are artists, they probably, or let's say we are asking them to draw different shapes, draw three different shapes, right? Maybe some of them will do this. Some of them might do something like this. So yeah, it, it also comes with taste, uh, but it's all there is, right? If you look at any stylized drawing, uh, doesn't matter if it's a concept art, it's a concept design, animation, figure drawing, whatever it is, or sculpture, it's like same with figures, right? You can just exaggerate. Uh, let's say this is the chest, this is the belly, this is the groin area. You can just exaggerate the chest and you know you are basically saying this is a tough guy right when you are exaggerating the chest the more simple you think about these shapes uh, easier it is to you know stylize and play with them whenever you look at some artists that do stylized drawings they probably studied this over and over again, right? Maybe intentionally, maybe not intentionally, but at the end of today, this is the concept, uh, pretty much all stylized drawings use.